Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland and today we are going to propagate a begonia, a rhizome begonia and I've done this before, I've done leaf cutting propagation with begonias but today we're going to do something a little bit more radical because I am going to take the whole begonia and cut it into pieces and propagate from the rhizome and the advantage of this is that you get baby plants much quicker than if you do it from leaf cuttings. So so let's get on with it. Okay, so today we are going to propagate Begonia escargo, which is this one here. Now this begonia isn't doing well so I've decided to cut my losses and to cut it all up into little pieces and in that way I will have lots and lots of baby plants. So as you can see I have a substantial rhizome here even though the plant isn't doing so well itself and I have previously propagated it by removing some bits and today what I'm going to do is actually divide it all up so propagate the whole lot and that is going to mean cutting this plant into small pieces. So out we go here and just remove all the soil until we're left with the root ball, although the root ball isn't really going to be of much use to us for this method. So I have my trusty secateurs here. And what I am now going to do is to cut some pieces of the rhizome. Now, there doesn't seem to be any particular art to this. We're not looking for eyes or anything. We're just looking to cut off rhizome pieces. So what I'm going to do first is remove a longish piece here. So my first cut will be over here because I can just feel that this is quite loose and will come away easily. The roots aren't doing a whole lot at this stage in the game and we're just going to ease that out. If you can remove it, taking as many roots as possible with it, then all the better. And now we have my first piece of rhizome and potentially, you know, when it has roots like that, it will just by placing it in soil, it should just grow again. So that's my first piece. Let's put that down here. And then moving my plant around and having a look at what else I have. There's quite a lot of propagation material here. So just take off some of this stuff down below. And I guess I'll cut it here. We'll cut these pieces smaller in a minute. This is just to give us our basic propagation material. Okay, well you saw that was quite brutal. This piece has naturally cut. And actually this piece of rhizome is, I think, very kind of desiccated. So I won't try and propagate with that because I'm not sure it will be successful. But we will use this piece here. And Let's see what we have here with this one. And then obviously this one here is going to be very good for us. And for my mix, I'm using something that's quite well drained. It's got some perlite in there, which does a great job of holding on to moisture as needed. And a little bit of horticultural grit, horticultural sand and some compost. Generally speaking, begonias are unfussy about their soil mix. So I'm going to fill up this little tray here with the mix. Just move my stuff aside and put some of the mix in here. And it'll be interesting to see how many pieces 
I get out of these rhizomes. And now I'm going to cut up my rhizome pieces. So this is quite a healthy piece of rhizome. And I think I'm gonna cut this into maybe four pieces. So round about there. Let's try here, which is quite small. And here. And that gives us four pieces. And this piece here, it's hard to know exactly what's going on because it disappears under the soil, but it all seems rather firm and good. So I'm gonna, I'm going to try cutting round about here. And it looks kind of firm in there, so that's good. And this piece here, yeah, it seems to be well <laughs> encased by soil that doesn't want to come off. So I may just plant that up as it is. And then what else have we got? We've also got this piece here, which is a bit all over the place. And I'm gonna cut this into one here. Yeah, let's try cutting here. And then this final piece, I'll just cut it in two like that. So I've just ensured that there's a little bit of space at the top and I'm taking my first cutting here, which is a small piece. And we can tell this is, this is the way down because it has some remnants of roots. And I'll just place this on top of the soil here. And now I will go fishing for my next piece, which seems to be this one here and I think we will lay that one down here. Now I have another small piece. Just trim off some of these very long roots. A piece in there. Okay so that one goes in there. This one is smaller. Again we'll just trim the roots and pop it in. So we will place that here. Now oh, where's the other one gone? Okay, here it is, in here. And then finally, we have this kind of lump here that I'm not sure what's going on all together. Ah, do you know what this is? This is the original plug that the plant came in from, I bought it when I bought it, it was a plug plant. And the shape and everything, and look at that medium in there. We have also the remnants of the little container that it came in. So that's essentially what we're looking at here and why it was so solidly together. So I'm just going to remove this bit of the rhizome from its original plug. Trim the roots a little bit and we'll just pop this one in here. That one there is just a little bit big. I'm going to cut this in half, although it makes it quite small, but we'll do a bit of an experiment and see if small pieces like that will also propagate. Pop that in there and that in here. And while we're in the neighborhood, why not propagate a few more rhizome begonias because I have space in this tray. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of mix in these four cells here. No, actually, let's make it six cells because I've just remembered a third begonia that I wouldn't mind propagating. And the second plant I want to propagate is this one here called Curly Fire Flush. Now I'm not going to destroy the plant, it's doing quite well, but I am going to remove a bit of rhizome here. And this one has beautiful leaves as you can see, so everybody wants a piece of this. I'm going to remove this rhizome here that seems to have lost its leaves, but it's still quite firm. And now we have a piece which I will just snip into maybe round about here and pop in the propagation tray. Pop 
probably an idea to get rid of any kind of dried sheaths like that. There, let's get two more. Next up we have a species begonia and this one is called begonia seismorii with fabulous, fabulous leaves. And I am looking for a bit of overhanging rhizome that I might snip off. This looks like a good place. And this rhizome here is overhanging the pot a little bit. So I'm just gonna snip it off here like so. Actually, I think it's probably big enough to cut in two and make into two cuttings. Here's my cutting. I'm just going to remove this little flower stem here. Oh, poor little thing making flowers. And the leaves as well. Now, of course, you can use the leaves to propagate the plant from as well. I've propagated this species begonia from leaf cuttings as well and it works. Okay so we now have two pieces which we will pop in here. One, two and now let's go get our last begonia. And finally we're going to propagate or attempt to propagate this lovely begonia which is called Mazai nigrescence as far as I recall and it is a gorgeous hanging habit really really attractive now this one has smaller rhizomes than the previous plants we've looked at less thick rhizomes so I'm not sure how it's going to work out but we're going to try it anyway because it has plenty 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 of rhizomes all hanging over at the edge of the pot so I think I'm going to cut this rhizome here. I'll have more than two cuttings, I think, because it does twist around and around. So snip that over. And as I mentioned, because this is a smaller rhizome, I'm not quite sure that the cutting will take. But we will experiment and see. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut the pieces of rhizome, working with the thickest, say, there. Oops, that fell down. And say, yeah, let's go there. And let's pop them in our propagation tray. And here we are with my cuttings, which I'm just going to place in here and in here. And now I'm just going to trickle some potting mix over my rhizomes like this and down this side. And very important, of course, to label them to make sure that we don't get all mixed up. There's the label from my Escargo Begonia. And I need some labels for these other ones here. Just firm around a little bit. You don't have to completely cover the rhizomes. You can leave a bit sticking up. The next step is to give these little cuttings some water. I like to use warm water so as not to shock them too much. And we can wet them rather well. The mix is well drained so it's not going to retain anything it shouldn't. And I'm going to put my cuttings into a watertight propagation tray. So this one underneath just serves to catch any dripy water and then there's a lid on top that when placed on serves to make it airtight or watertight so this is a closed system now and it means that the water can circulate but it can't get out so there's no need to water until such a time as the lid is taken off and I'm going to pop this on top of a heat mat which I have upstairs just to keep them nice and warm until they get going and they do get going quickly so lid on on heat for best results and here's a little baby that I propagated not very long ago it takes about a month for top growth to come out when you propagate in this way and you can see here that I have quite a healthy little baby at this stage not to get complacent be careful when you take the lid off and 
I would suggest, even after you see the top growth, gradually removing the lid. So maybe take it off during the day and put it on again at night and just check the humidity as you go because begonias do like humidity. And this one, when it's so vulnerable and so small, is, well, you know, particularly vulnerable. So do keep an eye on it. Okay, so we will put this upstairs and hopefully within a month, I'll have lots and lots of new baby begonias. Thank you very much as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and just a reminder that the leaf propagation method for begonias, for getting more begonias, I made a video about that a good while ago but I'll link to that here at the very end. It is a great way if you want lots and lots of babies. This method however is faster if you do have a spare rhizome. Thanks as always for watching and I will see you on the next video. Bye!